I hope you can all see the presentation on the screen now. Um, so we are going to start with a brief presentation, uh, which gives an introduction of program indicators. Then we'll have a hands-on exercise, and then which is followed by uh, you all following that exercise on the exercise instance, which is given in the learner's guide. So this is the structure of the presentation. We'll start with a brief introduction of what program indicators are, how are they derived, what are the two types of program indicators, event and enrollment indicator types, and what is the difference between them. Then we'll understand how program indicators help in uh, tracker data analysis, which cannot be done by other visualization applications like event uh, visualizer and event reports that you learned yesterday which is followed by, again, a hands-on. Starting with what are program indicators? Program indicators are computed variables based on data elements or attributes and constants that are used to aggregate individual level data. So for example, I visited a health facility yesterday and, my, and I was registered in a tracker program and the health facility wants to know today how many patients were registered in the tracker program yesterday. So my data will be aggregated, including all the other patients' data who visited yesterday using a program indicator, which will give a count of how many patients visited yesterday. So an aggregation of individual level data is what we get from program indicators. An example which is shown on this screen is um, the number of first AstraZeneca doses given to patients. So if you want to know how many patients have been administered first dose of AstraZeneca in the COVID vaccination program, then how would you do that? So the screenshot which is, sh which is shown below is that of an event report. You can see the uh, case-based details and the type of dose of uh, vaccine given to the patients with the dose numbers. Now you can filter and find out how many patients were given first AstraZeneca doses. So a count of the number of patients given AstraZeneca doses will be my program indicator result. Now you would say it is very similar to what we get from event visualizer and event re report. So yes, the answer is uh, true that it looks very similar to what we get from event visualizer and event reports with added with some added features, more flexibility that we can get from program indicator analysis, and something we do not get from event visualizer and maps. This is something that we'll discuss further. So what is it that we can do with the event reports and uh, what additional features that we uh, are, are there that we can get with program indicator analysis using tracker data? So what we cannot do with event reports and visualizer uh, and maps is we cannot create enrollment type pivot tables or enrollment type visualization in event visualizer and maps. But with program indicators, we somehow are able to perform these operations in data visualizer app and in maps. So what are the pros and cons of uh, using program indicator data analysis? They give you more flexibility in creating summaries of event and enrollment tracker data. And they can be used in tools which uh, users are generally more familiar with as they are used with aggregate data analysis as well, like data visualizer and maps. And they also offer additional functionality. So for example, when you are creating program indicators, uh, you can use uh, many filters that uh, help in uh, comparing data from different program stages in the, uh, in the tracker program. For example, if statements you can count the uh, relationships. You can count. You can uh, measure the difference in dates. For example, uh, say samples, uh, sample collection date, and uh, result 
date. You can see the turnaround time by checking the difference between the result date and the sample collection date. So these are some of the uh, pros that you can see with the program indicator analysis. So, and what are the disadvantages? So, I mean, each program indicator needs to be configured manually in the application. For example, if you want to calculate a date difference that need to be uh, set in the filter section in the program indicators. Um, so in this uh, session, we are not going to see how program indicators are configured. We are going to see how they are used for analysis. So configuration is something that we learn in the uh, Configuration Academy, Tracker Academy. Uh, so another uh, disadvantage, you can say disadvantage, is that you can define a requirement for a program indicator when you are creating it, but you cannot change the filter when you are generating the reports real time. Because the program indicator has all, uh, already been set, all you can do is generate that program indicator using a uh, data visualizer app. But with the event report, you can just drag and drop the filters. And if there is a uh, if there is a lot of data that you are going to generate with the program indicator with many filters, that then it would sometimes slow the systems. What are the two types of program indicators? One is event program indicator, and the second is enrollment program indicator. And what is the difference between these two? So event program indicator, it evaluates each event within a particular program stage. An enrollment program indicator, it evaluates the entire enrollment within a particular program. So for example, my information is stored in a program and I want to analyze the data uh, which is stored in any of the program stages in a program, then I would use a pro enrollment program indicator. And if I want to compare the data between two program stages, then I would use an enrollment program indicator and not event program indicator. We'll see the examples uh, in the next slide. So in this case, uh, you can see um, if you want to see the number of PCR tests that were requested for a particular time period and for a particular uh, organization unit. And you can see that there are two events in this case, event one and event two. So if you are generating an event uh, indicator, the indicator value will be two. If you're generating an enrollment indicator, the value will be one. Why? Because the enrollment indicator uses the latest in late information from the last stage, which has been uh, enter, where the information is entered. The next example of an enrollment indicator, how they are used and how they are useful is uh, in uh, this example. For example, you want to see the number of patients that were hospitalized and they and were tested positive for COVID. And the information about the hospitalization status is stored in stage one, which is clinical examination and diagnosis. And the information about results is stored in stage three. So a program indicator will be configured, which will say that uh, a count of um, hospitalized cases and lab results with result where the result is positive to be generated. And now that the information is compared between two to two stages, stage one and stage three, that you can get with an enrollment indicator. Now we can see these examples and we can generate some reports in uh, the instance and we can see how they work. I'll reshare my screen. So I'll go to the app data visualizer.
here i first want to generate a pivot table so what i'll do is on the top left corner i'll select the chart type where you can see column is selected right now i'll just click on this option and select pivot table then i'll click on data here in columns I'll select the data type program indicators. The program I'm going to select is COVID-19 vaccination registry. And the program indicator I'm going to select is underlying conditions. So I want to see the number of cases with underlying conditions that have been registered. So I'm going to select this indicator, move it to the right hand side and click on update. I am going to select a period of last six months. So I want to see a trend of last six months here, update and organization unit. I am going to select all the organizations at level two. So I am going to Select all org units below the country and click on update. So now you can see that um, the data is not looking very aesthetic. So we can just change the layout, move the period in columns, and update it and I'll move the organization unit in the rows. You can just drag and drop and update. So here you can see on top the last six months starting March 22 to August 22. And org units on the left, you can see uh, the number of patients that have been enrolled in this program that had underlying conditions. Then what we can do is then we can create a chart. So to create a chart, I can just go to file and open new i'll go to the chart type again and click on say i want to create a line chart now these are the all chart types that you can create which is um, available as options on the screen i can click on line chart and then i can go to data select my data type which is program indicators Select the program. This time I'm going to select COVID-19 case space surveillance. And I'm going to select these three uh, indicators, symptoms present, symptom present death, and recovered. And I'll click on update. period I'm going to select is, I'm going to select a fixed period this time. And yearly. Say I want to select Twenty twenty, then I can select twenty twenty and update. If you don't have any data in one of the periods, you will see that the chart is empty. 
organization unit again i want to select all organization units below law pdr at level 2 update i want to select uh, this year because that's when we have data uh, in this application so this year is 2022 so I hope you are aware of uh, how do we select because you have I'm not going into the details of how what all options are there in the app because you have seen the apps yesterday event visualizer and event uh, reports but if you still have any questions you can ask in the chat or once we finish. I will select this year and click on update. So this is what we get once you change the layout you will see the data which is populated in this graph so now you can see i can um, i can see the covid patients with uh, you have covid 19 symptoms uh in green death in blue uh and record in red but i don't really want to see these colors uh in the in the way they are shown i want to see deaths in red i want to see the patients that have recorded in green i can't really change this sequence of colors here in um, visualizer but i can change the sequence of my data elements to change the to change how they are, appear and where they appear on in the chart so i can just move record first on top then i can say symptoms present can be in blue and that i want to show in red then i'll choose the sequence the way i want to show them on the screen and i'll click on update So this way I see record in green, symptoms present in blue, and that's in red. You can also convert this line chart directly in a pivot table if you change the chart type here. So if it's a line graph right now, I'll click on pivot table and I'll click on update. So now you see the same information in a pivot table. This chart also can be open in a map. If I click on open as map, it will redirect me to the DHIS2 maps option. So the thing with maps is you can use only one program indicator on one layer. I'll click on this and it will show me COVID-19 symptoms present and the cases that have recovered on the screen. However, if you want to add two indicators here, I can add another layer and I'll select on thematic layer. Then I'll select program indicators program uh, case-based surveillance and the program indicator I want to see is symptoms present and deaths. And I'll go to style, I'll change the color to say this and I'll click on add layer. Now, uh, if I want to just See the depth here on the screen. I can, uh, you can see this toggle visibility option here. I can just turn it off. It'll show me only the uh, depth. If I want to see the recovered cases only, I can um, 
with the toggle visibility on uh, the symptoms present and recovered cases. Then I'll show the then it will show the recovered cases only. Now we can move to the first exercise on the learn in the learner's guide, which is to create a table. I think we can have a few minutes for you to go through the exercise and ask questions if you face any challenges in generating the chart tables, chart and table. Uh, if you have, then you can ask me. Uh, if not, then we can uh, move further after 10 minutes and generate the next chart. 